Welcome to Culturing Microbes. This is the Yeast Lab. First step is to make sure that you scrub up. So wash your hands really well. You want to make sure that you don't get any contamination from your hands into your workspace. You should work to be as sterile as possible, so wear a mask and your safety glasses. The first step is to pour your agar petri plates. All right, so the first thing you want to make sure that you do is clean your workspace. So make sure you've wiped everything down with cleaner. Make sure you're wearing your mask, right? Make sure you've got safety glasses on your face. Um, regular glasses are fine or lab provided safety glasses. You want to go ahead and gather your materials, your tube and your Sharpie, your stack of two Petri plates, keep them closed, your weigh boat, your balance, and you should have a little packet of potato dextrose agar. Mine's in a bottle, yours may be different. And then you want your notebook. And you want to go ahead and label your tube just as usual with your initials, date, period, and then what's going to be in it, which is going to be potato dextrose agar. And then you're ready to go ahead and weigh out the potato dextrose agar. So put the weigh boat on the balance, make sure you zero it with the weigh boat on there. And then you're going to carefully measure out the potato dextrose agar. You want to go slowly, try to make sure you get the exact amount. If you do end up going a little bit over, you can always use a clean spoon to scoop out the extra, but try to be as precise as you can. When you're done, turn off the weigh boat, move it aside, and then tap all of the material into the tube. Try to be careful not to spill. And you can go ahead and wash the weigh boat and reuse. All right, so the next thing you're going to do is you're going to add hot boiling water to your potato dextrose agar. So you want to grab some hot hands of some sort, pot holders, whatever, boil some water. You may want to get some help with this step. Be very careful with the hot water. Make sure you have your safety glasses on and you have heat protection. And you're going to fill this tube up to the 20 mil line. Okay, carefully. Then you want to make sure you cap it securely before you do anything else. Make sure the cap's on there nice and tight, and then you're going to invert it, shake it, invert it, shake it. If there's any clumps left at the bottom, you want to use a wooden stir stick to swirl around in there and get it all mixed thoroughly. Okay, make sure the water's really hot or it's not going to dissolve. Okay. Once you've mixed it, you can go ahead and pour your Petri plates. So you're going to label them on the bottom. So let's set this aside. You're going to label the plates on the bottom. Half of the plate will be positive, meaning it has the yeast, and the other half will be negative, meaning it doesn't. So you'll put a plus here. This is the side you'll put the yeast on, and you'll put a minus here. This is the side that will not have yeast, your control. Then you just want to write what's in it, so yeast. Make sure you're writing small and around the edge. All right, you're going to stack them up, and you're going to pour starting with the bottom plate, and you're going to pour just enough to cover the bottom of the plate, okay? It may still be kind of hot, so you may want to use um, the hot hands. But you want to kind of clear everything else out, give yourself a clean space to work. Right? You're going to open it up. You want to keep the plates closed as much as possible, okay? When you look at a Petri plate, you've got this smaller circle. That's the bottom where you pour the agar. The bigger circle is the lid. And you don't want to leave these open, okay? Okay. You also don't want to touch the inside, so you're just going to crack open the bottom one, pour just enough to cover the bottom of the plate, then cover it up right away. Okay. You're going to do the same for the next one, just enough to cover the bottom of the plate, cover it up. You may see some condensation forming, don't worry about that, it's fine. Okay, you're going to set these aside and let them cool while you prepare the yeast. While you leave your plates to cool, you want to go ahead and prep the yeast. So you're going to take another 15 mil tube, you're going to label it, initials, date, period, and what it is. This is going to be your yeast solution. And you got to feed the yeast to get them growing. So we're going to feed them with sugar, so we're going to start by making a sugar water solution. So you will probably have a little packet of sugar, like a restaurant packet. I just have this baggie. You want your yeast, you'll want some warm tap water, and then a weigh boat and your balance. Okay, the amount should be in your notebook. Make sure you're following along in your pre-lab. 
we'll start by weighing out the sugar. Make sure you zero the balance with the weighter on it. Try to be as precise as you can. If you get a little over, just throw a little bit out. Once you get to the right amount, you're gonna put it into the tube. Try not to spill. And then you can reuse this weigh boat in just a moment. Don't move it to the side while you fill up to the 10 mil line with the warm water. And it can just be tap water, that's fine. I'm gonna make sure you don't go over 10 mils, so go slowly. Perfect. All right, you're gonna put the cap on, you're gonna mix. Make sure it's securely on there until all of the sugar dissolves. All right, now you're gonna add the yeast. So again, make sure the balance is at zero. You're gonna weigh out the right amount of yeast. as you can get and you're going to add that also into your tube. Go ahead and secure it cap, cap firmly to start. Turn off your weigh boat or your balance. Make sure you clean it if needed. You want to invert this to mix the yeast in. And then you're going to let it sit and start to grow and divide. I would place it upright and leave the cap a little bit loose so it can vent. It's gonna create carbon dioxide gas. So leave the cap just a little bit loose, upright somewhere, leave these two things to sit and you can clean up everything else. All right, so once your plates have cooled, you wanna go ahead and make sure your hands are clean again, so wash them real well. Put on your mask and safety glasses to make sure you're creating a very sterile environment. We're gonna add some of the yeast to your positive side of your Petri plates. So you wanna go ahead and screw on the cap tightly and invert the tube a couple of times to mix it all up. Okay. Open it back up. I would keep the cap on a little bit for now while we get everything ready. All right, so the Petri plates, you got your solid layer of agar now at the bottom. There's some condensation on the top, don't worry about that. All right, and you've got your plus side where you're gonna put the yeast and your minus side that's your control, so no yeast, okay? You wanna make sure these plates stay closed as much as possible, okay? Anytime they're open, you risk contaminating. You especially wanna be careful not to touch the inside of the plates. So I've seen students before like lift the lid off with their thumb touching the inside of the lid. That's bad, right? You wanna make sure they stay as sterile as possible. Okay, so you're gonna need a clean wooden stir stick and a clean transfer pipette. You're just gonna put one drop onto each plate on the plus side. And again, keep things closed as much as possible. Don't like touch the end of this or anything like that. Okay. So let's start here. So you're gonna find the plus side, which is here. And you're gonna put one drop on there. Okay, and then I would maybe, let's see. Let's put this back in here so it doesn't touch the, the counter or anything. You're gonna take your wooden stir stick and you're gonna very carefully open this up, cover, hold this cover over it so it doesn't get anything falling from above. And you're gonna use the wooden stir stick to gently, gently spread the liquid across the surface of the plus side only. Don't touch the minus side. And you wanna be very gentle. Like imagine you're like icing a cake. You don't wanna dig in. You don't wanna disrupt the agar at all. You're just sliding it across the surface on the plus side. All right, then you're gonna cover it up. All right, don't set this down. Now we're gonna move on to the other one. All right, again, you're gonna add one drop to the plus side. Make sure you double check which one's which. Using the same wooden stir stick, you're gonna again gently spread like you're icing a cake. Spread that across the plus side of the plate. You wanna try and avoid lifting any agar up like I just did, so be as gentle as you can be. All right, these are now gonna sit someplace that's warm but not hot so you don't want them cold but you also don't want to put them like in a window where they might get direct sun or like on a heater so just probably somewhere in your kitchen is fine you're going to set these aside overnight everything else at this point can be thrown away so your wooden stir stick your pipette and your tube can just get thrown away and then you're going to wait until tomorrow to check your plates
Every day you should take a, take a look at your plates and try and photograph them. As soon as you see clear growth like this, you're done, okay? And then you can go ahead and clean up. If you don't see growth by day three, I would go ahead and clean up anyways. You don't wanna risk growing something gross. So once you see growth on your plates, what you really wanna do is you wanna make sure you sterilize them just in case there's some other growth aside from the yeast that's on here. All right, so 10% bleach is a little less dangerous than undiluted bleach, but it still can uh, mess up your clothes and hurt your eyes. Um, so you still wanna be careful. You're gonna open up your plates one at a time, and you're just gonna cover the surface with bleach. So pour enough to cover, you don't wanna overflow it, so be careful. But just enough to cover the surface. Right, and then close it back up. Same for the next one, cover the surface and close it back up. You wanna let these sit for at least 15 minutes, but more like an hour is better. And then um, they should be pretty sterilized. So even if there was something weird growing, it's all fine now. Um, and you can go ahead and just sort of drain them in the sink and throw them in the trash. I would still wash your hands after doing this just to be safe.